Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Welcome to Dansky Live. Oh, today we're going to be jumping into Photoshop and um, yeah, this is going to be a fun one. <laughs> this is going to be really, really interesting and uh, potentially quite embarrassing because um, when I first started design, back when I was 17, someone so showed me Photoshop and I realized very quickly that you could smudge people's faces, stretch them, warp them, um, swap one head with another, do all sorts of ridiculous things. And that has always been my Achilles heel. And uh, I giggle like a child <laughs> doing that even to this day. So with generative fill, which is what we're going to be doing today, I've got no idea what is going to happen. Um, I've got a few pictures kind of lined up but I thought it'd be much more fun to keep the entire thing unscripted because I've been using generative fill recently and it has been brilliant, surprisingly and terrifyingly brilliant and also terribly bad as well, hilariously. So either way, I can promise you that we are going to have fun and uh, I might just, you know, I might die laughing, basically. There is the chance that I just end up in hysterics. So if I do, I'm going to try not to uh, completely blow out your ears by... Uh, screaming into the microphone <laughs> with laughter but um yeah it should be fun either way hello to everyone in the chat graphic up anthony the archaic way amjad Sema, alok welcome back akshay hello dan hello akshay hello 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 right <clears throat> so if you want to give generative fill a go you'll need to download the photoshop beta uh, i can probably show you where that is actually down here on the side, you've got beta apps, and then you've got all these different betas down here. So if you didn't know that, well, there you go. You've got all of them in beta, and uh, I'm using Photoshop beta. Okay, first up, let's load up an image. Also, um, I'm going to need some input from you guys as well. So it'd be much more fun, I think, if we all work on this. This is going to be a team effort. Um, we might create something really good. It might look absolutely bloody awful. Uh, I've got no idea. So I've got a few pictures here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Maybe not that one. I think these are a bit more interesting. It's just me pulling a stupid face, uh, kind of holding something, force pushing something, and like holding something with two hands. So I don't know. Let's Let's start off with something simple. Let's start with this one. This is pretty easy. There we go, let's open up that. Okay, so first of all, I'll show you generative fill that has actually been useful for me. This is kind of me playing around with um, taking pictures and the new kind of uh, camera angle setup that you might have seen in some videos. <coughs> Excuse me. And one way you can use generative fill very quickly is just grab that lasso tool and if I just quickly draw a selection over here, I didn't like this shelf at first. It was kind of annoying me. So I thought, oh, I'll try and remove that. And, oh, where's the bar gone? Oh, that's a good start, isn't it? Where's the, <laughs> where's the generative bar? Where's it gone? Oh, no. <laughs> There's supposed to be a uh, contextual bar. Hang on, I'm gonna have to look up where the bar's gone. I swear that was there the other day. Is it photo? God, this is a great start, isn't it? <clears throat> bar, show, hide. Do you know, I think what I did was I hid it. I think I hid it because it was getting on my nerves following me around. <laughs> and now, <laughs> now I don't know where it is. <laughs> the Windows menu. <laughs> Thanks, Logan. Where are you? Oh, oh, there we go, contextual taskbar. Nice, thank you, Logan. Okay, so by default, yeah, you'll have this pop up when you make a selection and you can click generative fill. You can type something, but if you leave it blank and click generate, and it's done a pretty good job on this before. Hey, Tom, welcome. Quinton, welcome back. Oh, I got to skip it and catch up later. Flood of work and parent duties. Ah, oh, work and parent duties. God, tell me about it. Right. So if I just close the properties, you can see, look at that. Look at that. Like off the bat, 
and it gives me three that I can click through. I mean, look at that. That is insane. Like, obviously, some, li some little kind of details around the edges, but it's not only identified the pattern on the wall, but it's actually matched the blue lighting and everything. Mm, that one's not so great, but the second one, that's pretty spot on as a starting point anyway. And I can generate again and get a bunch more. And In fact, let's just see if it can uh, do that entire top section. I've got no idea what it'll do here because it's uh, you got like this, this room's got like a sloped ceiling so let's uh, see what it does <clears throat> and the great thing about this is i can use this for a photo you know i've got rid of that shelf i can use that for a photo but also if i have a video and i'm kind of talking to the camera in the middle of the screen here i can actually remove that from a still image bring that into premiere pro and then just mask out that shelf bit on its own and then actually use part of a photograph on top of a video. As long as I don't throw my hands up over by where that shelf would be, I can actually add things into the background on my videos. <clears throat> uh, what have I just done? Oh, oh yeah, the top, right. Huh, that looks kind of cool, actually. Yeah, so some are better than others. You can keep generating, generating, and generating, or take one bit of one and one from another. But you can see that very quickly, I've just extended the height of my foam wall without the need to go and put more foam up. It's pretty insane, actually. <laughs> Anthony says, try it with something spheric to put in your hand. Does it recreate the hand or just put it there? I don't know. If you saw my post on Twitter, it turned my hand into a bird last time, like a little, little pigeon hand. <laughs> so... Can you take that person off my office chair? I don't know. Maybe we can, Quinton. Let's find out. We'll select me. Clearly, I'm on Quinton's office chair. He's not too happy about it. So we're going to make a selection of this imposter here. This ginger invader. And we're going to just generative fill him away. I don't know what it's going to do. Which is uh, the fun. That's the fun part. <laughs> It's like I got VR headset on me. Whoa, what what is that? Holding a cassette? I just spit my coffee over. Sorry, Reese. I should have warned you. <laughs> oh god, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. I'm terrified. I know, Anthony. Tell me about it, man. It's um Hey, I said it was gonna be unpredictable. <laughs> stuff of nightmares oh if i show that to my kids they just they, they wouldn't sleep for a long time and we've got all these generations up here let's just squidge that panel over a bit there we go so what else have we got Ooh, <laughs> that's um it's kind of like an alien uh i'm getting i'm getting alien call center vibes you know like i'm just in the middle of a court oh, what is that God, I mean, it's the, the, the hands and faces. I don't know if this is a thing with AI. It, I kind of heard a few people talk about it very loosely, that hands and faces, it kind of struggles with a bit. Hey, it's just turned me into a boombox and a set of headphones. <laughs> Damn. This is gonna. Oh, I've just lit, Phil. I've literally just started, mate. We've literally just started. If you've only just joined, you've missed. You've missed the practical application of generative AI, just filling in a bit of ceiling or some boring, some such. Uh, this is where it's going to get really interesting. Wish I could stay for the whole stream. It'll be there. It'll be there later on, Quinton. Don't you worry. Buckle up with that brew. Yeah, Phil. Please don't don't do what Reese did and spill your coffee everywhere or spit it everywhere. Because uh, right, we've got one more as well. Whoa. Damn. <laughs> yeah, 
I don't know why it does that with faces. I find it really odd. But um, yeah, I mean, sorry, Quinton. We couldn't get rid of me. We could t we could try and write get. No, let's not do get rid. Let's go remove human, if you can call that uh, thing human. I don't know. This is one way I did use it before, though. I, I, what I did was I, you can see that it has filled in parts of the background. So. <laughs> hey, salesman. <laughs> salesman Dan. <laughs> what even is that? It's just a just a coagulated mess. Yeah, but so what but what it is doing is it in some of them it's actually doing a decent job filling in those tiles in the background. So what and I think Yeah, so you can see whatever this thing is here, this humanoid monstrosity is actually smaller than me. So what I kept doing before was generating something with generative fill, and every time the object got smaller and smaller and smaller. I would just keep masking the images out until eventually it removed, um, I think it was me or something else, I can't remember, but until it actually removed it from the image. Because <clears throat> it is filling in the background as we go. And that is a lot smaller than uh, than original me. But anyway, let's go back to, let's go back to me and try and uh, put something in my hand. So suggestions in the chat, what shall I put in my hand? And uh, let's let's try and keep it clean. We we don't want to violate. Well, <laughs> do we want to violate the, the Adobe user guidelines? Probably not. Uh, or YouTube's terms of service or whatever. <laughs> Demonetized. Channel deleted. Moody brunette Dan, I know. Why do people look confused? I think confused is very uh, polite. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be... I think saying that's confused would be uh, quite a stretch. It's definitely something. Oh my. <laughs> I tried a half man, half great white shark riding a skateboard yesterday. It didn't end well. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Wish me luck for landing a high paying freelance gig so I can afford to get a Capisco chair in Cape Town. My back is screaming for it. Oh, nice. Good work, sir. Yeah, they are very good. And they're, they're cool that you can sit on them both ways as well. You can sit on it kind of as you would normally, but then you can flip the chair around the other way and get into all sorts of weird and wonderful positions. Future Teller's Crystal Ball. Okay, any other suggestions? What should we put in my hand? Hmm. I'll tell you what, while we wait, we will do crystal ball. So let's just, we'll do a few. Actually, that's not the right shape. Let's try and get the right shape. Generative fill. Crystal ball. This is fun. I've, I've been wanting to do this for a few weeks. I've been looking forward to this one. Maybe try a panda bear in a leather jacket taking a bong hit. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Huh. That's interesting. <clears throat> I mean, I can't really tell that with the glass. Is it? That No, that's not my neck, is it? Is that my neck? I'm not sure if it's trying to make it look like you can sort of see me in the background through the crystal ball, but it doesn't look like it, but it's got that bit of blue in it, so you could kind of get away with it. It's not bad. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Considering that took me, like, literally a few seconds, mini tan, <laughs> literally a few seconds. Okay, right, well, I'm gonna try this one. Let's, uh, let's write the prompt. Panda bear in a leather jacket taking a bong hit. Well, that is definitely going to get flagged for having the word bong in it, but we'll try it anyway, because why not? Yeah, there we go. Okay. One or more words in your prompt violate use the guidelines. Hmm. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> yes, yeah, the word panda, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. Right, no. 
Come on, stop messing around, Dan. Right, panda. Actually, let's try that. Let's try that thing. I'll just put a full stop at the end of it. I'll see if this works. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, I saw a few people trying that, and uh... okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to remove the the bong aspect. But we'll have panda in leather jacket. And now ask the ball the future of AI. <laughs> we'll just get a picture back of a bunch of uh, cities and just rubble. Whoa. Oh, wait, where's it generated that? Oh! Oh, look at that. Look at the little panda. <laughs> jacket off oh this is just me or is it getting hot in here oh no <laughs> that is horrific oh wow yeah i like the cute little panda that one's uh <laughs> interesting to say the least <laughs> that one oh no that is horrific. Dragon Ball. I have no idea what a Dragon Ball is. Not Dragon Ball Z is. <laughs> All right, let's just make a selection. All right, we'll type in Dragon Ball. <clears throat> oh man. Uh, okay, well, we've got a ball. Whoa, <laughs> okay. Change the hair. It's brilliant. Oh, what, my hair? Okay. <laughs> Dentist required, I know. Okay, uh, all right, Pat. <laughs> I was gonna say panda really worked then. I mean, I like the, uh, I like the cute. No, that's not the one. There's a cute panda, but um, I've got the wrong layer. There it is, ball panda. I mean, it is wearing a leather jacket. Let's just let's just appreciate it is wearing the leather jacket. But that one, <laughs> what's this orange neck ring as well? Okay, let's change the hair. Um, Oh, I got an idea. Let's go with a 90s center parting hairstyle. I used to rock one of those back in the day. Try ear on your head. <laughs> It'd be perfect if there was a bamboo forest behind you. Well, maybe we could do that. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> look at that slicked back hair. <laughs> what? <laughs> no way! Hang on, how do I move this bar out of the way? Uh, pin bar position. Oh wait, no, I don't want to do that. I need to move it. There you go. You get down there. I mean, what? <clears throat> that. I mean, that's crazy, right? This this is why I find it pretty impressive and quite scary. Is that look at the lighting? Like I've got blue lights in the background. You can see it's kind of over the head and everything. And it actually factors that in and recreates this part of my head. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> More hairstyles. Talk to your barber. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, the last one, it actually looks pretty legit. Um, I mean, that's not quite what I was going for with a 90s center parting haircut. I'm sure you probably, if you, if you, any of you are old enough to remember that, you'll know what I mean. But, um, okay, <clears throat> let's try 
alternative ginger hairstyle. So we want to get ginger this time. I don't know what, I'm just going to put the word alternative to see what it comes up with. I mean, that could be anything. <laughs> 80s hairband long hair. Give it more space and go for Mohican. Yeah, I know, that's true. Tr Whoa, that is... <laughs> oh, okay, Ginger kind of... I think Ginger sort of threw it, really, because that ain't Ginger, that is, that is orange. That is bright orange. Let's try blonde. Let's change the word alternative. We'll go for crazy blonde hairstyle, because my hair is quite blonde. My beard might be Ginger, but the hair on my head is blonde. Dansky, you deserve an epic Viking beard. Oh, it's gone too blonde now. It's like bleach blonde. Oh, I could work with that. I'm sure I could work with that. We could we could grab the levels and uh, dim that down a bit. Let's just see if we can kind of mask this out. Yeah, dude, it's real quick. It's very lazily go around. There it is. <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is so much fun. And I could I could make that like less crazy blonde as well. I could kind of I could work with that and spend some more time on it. Um Epic Viking beard, you're right. We should definitely be we should be focusing on the beard for sure. So, we're going to type exactly that. Epic Viking beard. I have a feeling this is going to do a really good job, actually. I haven't tried this yet. Epic Viking beard. Forehead tattoos. Nice. Random question, Dansky. I think you're in Bristol. Do you know Joshua James Saunders of Never Not Working? Um, no, I don't. Um, I, I live just outside Bristol. But, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what Never Not Working is, unfortunately. Whoa! <laughs> <Yo>! <laughs> keep the teeth if you don't mind <laughs> that is so good <laughs> right glasses okay oh man oh god i'm crying that's so funny <laughs> this is great oh. okay gotcha he's another designer in your area that's why i was curious oh, okay cool but now i feel inclined to to look him up. Joshua James Saunders. Okay. Let me just screenshot that, actually. Ding. AI really wants to show your teeth. I think we've got some... we got we got a few fangs going on back there as well, look. A few little, little sharp ones. And I don't know what this is. It's my, uh... <laughs> my diamond pirate tooth in the back there. <laughs> Who wants gold teeth when you can have diamond teeth? I love the fact that it's extra ginger as well. Like, it's definitely made me more ginger. And then you've got the blonde hair on top. It's just... <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I think we'll keep, we'll keep that. We'll go with that hairstyle as well. That just feels a little bit more legit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh man, this is utterly terrifying. I got I gotta save this though before something goes wrong. Okay, let's um 
AI. Yeah, I'll just we'll save that on the desktop somewhere. Just in case Photoshop crashes, crashes and we lose. That's the thing. If it crashes, we lose this masterpiece forever. <laughs> like, if you go and do this, you're never going to probably get this same result again. That's the uh, the funny thing. Let's try another one. Let's go. <clears throat> oh, I just my face just looks a bit disappointing now without that incredible smile, those beautifully white teeth and that massive beard. Maybe I should grow the beard again. Let's go for massive, big, massive, epic Viking beard. Can we make it even bigger? <clears throat> Take a fireball in your mouth. <laughs> I think we'll um, we'll do glasses in a minute as well. Oh, cute kitten! Yeah, we'll definitely do that. We'll put a kitten on my shoulder as well. Oh, hello! <laughs> this is a little bit different. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> We've gone tribal. I've got my my bone stash, <laughs> my bone stash there with my beard wrapped around. <laughs> I'm going to use the same prompt. <clears throat> Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go back to Epic Viking King Beard because that gave me like a ginger one. But I'm going to ex no, not my head. Uh, let's extend it all the way down here. I want to see how it handles the same prompt but with more space. Will it make a bigger beard or will it just kind of make it vertical and keep it kind of pretty sort of narrow? Can you tell it to match your beard? Whoa! Okay. Oh my god, it's even... Oh, it's even tried to recreate like a really shit version of my tattoos. But it's... it's Look, this is the thing, right? This is the crazy thing. It's actually got the blue lighting in there. Like, it's insane. It's got the blue lighting from the background and the sides of my head. That It's muddled the fingers a little bit up here. I don't know what's going on up there. Looks like I got a bit of a bit of sushi or a prawn or something stuck there. But And I don't know what is going on here. It seems intent on getting rid of my teeth. What else have we got? Oh, <laughs> was it giving me, is that like a drink or something? Has deformed my hand and like turned it into. <gasps> Is that the bong? <laughs> Is it remembered the bong from earlier? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's put a cloth on my hand. <laughs> it's like giving me this crazy beard. And <laughs> it's just put a bit of cloth on the end of my hand. Oh no. Oh. Yeah. So I think I think I feel like we got really lucky with this one. I feel like that's the one I'm taking forward. Um Yeah. But now glasses. We'll get to the kitten in a minute as well. So Someone said Wayfarer sunglasses, so let's try Wayfarer sunglasses. Let's see what it does. Gdansky remove hair. I think we've already removed most of it. <clears throat> I think it would have no problem whatsoever remove it. Whoa. Oh, they're like, um, Neo's glasses in the Matrix. Huh. Do you know, they've turned out quite well, actually. <clears throat> I'm not sure what's going on with the eyes under here, though. They kind of, the eyes look a bit off. Like one looks like it's a little bit on the wonk. But actually, from a distance, they, they've all turned out pretty well. Oh, I, I quite like these ones, actually. You can't really see my eyes enough to see any issues there, but they look a little bit high. <clears throat> but um, but the tint of the glasses, I really like that. I'm happy with that. That's done a pretty decent job. 
I'm not sure what's going on here, but that's an easy fix to detach that. Let's just. Oh wait, no, it's actually retouched part of my face as well. All right, we'll leave that for now. That's an easy fix, <clears throat> dude. Pretty cool. Right, someone said about a kitten. So I think it probably makes sense to put them here. And my shoulder's kind of sloping down, so we'll see if it sits them on an angle or if it sits them flat. <clears throat> oh god, it gave you mouth ulcers. How is it <laughs> Yeah, we might have to clean some of that up. Look at that! That's insane! So we've got cute kitten. Yeah, it doesn't look the most photorealistic, but it's added the blue. This is what I find crazy, right? It's added the blue rim light to all the hair around the edge. The hair is really like, it's, it's transparent. There's no like fringing around the edge. So I don't have to clean any of that up. We've got the blue there. He's actually sat on the angle. This is more or less, more or less correct. That's insane. That is freaking insane. I haven't even looked at the other two yet. That is nuts. <clears throat> yeah, look, even this one. Got the blue light coming there, and you know that is that. That's the thing I find crazy and terrifying. Is in reality, when I shot this photo, the light was kind of behind me, physically behind me, pointing at my back. So the cat being positioned there, maybe it wouldn't be as pronounced, but you would get a rim light. Like when I moved my arms up in a certain place, <clears throat> I was seeing like um, like down here like parts of my body, as I moved around a bit on camera, I was seeing that blue rim light coming through. Yeah, I think my shoulder extends out too far to kind of see it, but because the cat's a little bit kind of in from the, the edge here, you're seeing some of that rim light. And that's crazy, because the, the Photoshop can't see where the light source is. It has to just look at what's in the in the photo and then try and use the light in the photo to figure out the light source. Oh, oh, that looks pretty cute as well. Oh, that one's really cute. I'll generate some more. Oh, this is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to put them all on now. It's like when you go into a pet shop and you can't just go with leave with one cat. You have to get another one and then get his brother and then you got to buy the whole family and yeah, that lighting. That's super impressive. <clears throat> and this is the thing. Even if I. I, to be honest, I could carry that into like a final piece of work. You know, obviously there's a few bits that are rough around the edges, but I can fix that. That's not a problem. It's done so much work here with the lighting and everything. Or I can mock this up as a concept and I could then go and grab stock assets. I know, okay, I like I want a cat looking to the side on an angle so I can kind of find a similar image but this enables me to mock up something like a draft really really quickly just to um, kind of get an idea of how it looks oh they're adorable they are all adorable I don't know this is either that one <clears throat> or that one I feel like that one because it's looking at the oh no I want them both Oh, maybe I can have them both. Let's see what happens if I copy one to the other side. And copy this one over. I know the lighting will technically be wrong, but... I wonder if I could... Oh, I wonder if I could just select subject. This fella here. Let's see if it will um, do a decent job. Yeah, not bad. <clears throat> and because there is blue lighting over here as well, actually, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't look too out of place, him having blue lighting. So there we go. I've got two cats on me now. Yay. <laughs> uh, I can shuffle him around a bit. 
Oh wait, no, that that does fluff up the background. Although, mm, actually, no. I'm, I I could cut this cat out and then move him around a bit. But because it's done such a good job with the fur here, I think I'll probably leave him in place and just maybe shift this guy down. There we go. Oh, here we go. I've got two cats on my shoulders now. Amazing. Dilshin says, damn, that looks good. I know, it's pretty crazy, right? <clears throat> a ginger kitty. That is a very good point. I wonder if I could put one in my hand, actually, holding a kitten. Uh, ginger kitten. I think it might mess up my hand. Make a dog with you. <laughs> Why not? We'll get we'll get some goats and a pig in here as well. Just we'll we'll make a full on farm. Put an eagle on your shoulder. Oh, that's not. Ooh, <laughs> that's creepy. Um, I wonder if I could add the in hand bit. I don't know what it will do with this. <clears throat> fish bowl. I think it would be alright with a fish bowl if it could handle a crystal ball. Yeah, that. oh, that's a cute angle. That's a cute angle. It, it looks a bit weird. Oh, that's better. That's, that's not. What's happened to my face? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's ruined my face, hasn't it? But... I could, could I work with that? Let's give it a go. Let's see if quick selection will do anything. Actually, no. Select subject. Even quicker. Will it select just the cat, though? Hmm. You can do a detailed one up here as well if you've got the quick selection tool selected. Yeah, it's kind of struggling there with that one. <clears throat> that cat's at the right pose but it just uh, ain't having it with the selection oh there we go quick selection tool's done a better job okay let's just try and do that and then we'll get rid of all this it's not bad that ain't bad. Oh no, that's my neck. I <laughs> don't know what's happened there. I mean, I I honestly, I'll be honest, I, I didn't think it was going to be that good. I thought it was going to, like, it, it messed up my face, but I thought it was going to take my entire hand and do something awful with that. So what do we got here? The fingers. All right, well, let's just... Hmm, let's see if we can just go around here. It's tricky because my hand is kind of out of focus. So I'm going to try and use a feathered brush to sort of mimic that blur. Because if I cut around this with a perfectly hard, crisp brush, it's not going to look right. So you can see I'm using that feathered brush to sort of mimic that blur. So we see we are going to do something. You are going to learn some useful stuff here. I'm not just going to be an idiot for the next hour. I'll try and get some something useful here. It's kind of put in a bit of finger there as well which is um not ideal but what i can do is let's rasterize this and now what i can do is actually work with this like a regular layer as well so let's uh do you know what i might be able to just <laughs> stick some white in there and then Actually, I, no, I should put that on a separate layer. Brush the white in, and then I can just gently use that feathered brush again to very carefully soften those edges. You can see with a hard edge, out of focus, kind of my fingers, and a hard edge just looks weird. But if I soften that edge, I can kind of mimic that blur a little bit. I'm doing this very carefully. 
<clears throat> yeah, it needs more work, but you know. <laughs> I mean, I had no idea what we were going to create today, uh, but it's turned out pretty, um, pretty interesting. And I've acquired three cats. Hi, Dansky, can you make a flame over your hand? That would be cool. Please save your hand from Kitty's potty. Yeah. Should we put a little, we'll put a little poo in there as well from the cat. Uh, actually, no, no, let's not do that. Right. Um, what was it? Flame. A flame over your hand. Oh, well, this, well, we'll try this hand because this hand is uh, available. Okay. Yeah, so there we go. We've got that cat as a smutter kitty cat. Flame over hand. Right. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I type for the prompt. Just flaming hand? So we'll see if it actually gets the hand. I don't really know what it's going to do here. I would hope that it just takes the existing hand and just adds fire to it, but we will see. Oh no. Oh no, that's creepy. Oh, I've got a new bracelet and a, a, a small hand. <laughs> this is my strong hand. <laughs> oh no. Uh, okay, maybe f flaming isn't fire hand. Let's try that. More cats on the table. <laughs> Just add cats everywhere, basically. Oh, thanks for joining, Semma. I'll catch you later. No, it doesn't seem to want to... Oh, we've got a little bit of, like, an ember there, but... Let's just try fire. It's fire, fire on its own. How can you fix those blurred fingers? Uh, these ones here. With a lot of patience. Oh, that's awful. No, that, okay, that's better. That's what I want, but it's blue instead of red. I could change the color, but it's not quite fire. Um, how can I fix the fingers? So I think actually what I will probably have to do in reality is because I've got a very shallow depth of field, I'm in focus, the background of my hand isn't. Um, you can see my entire hand is pretty much, even down here, is pretty blurred out. So I'll need to match the blur of the kitten to somewhere around where my wrist is. Because the kitten will be level with my wrist and my fingers obviously are extending forwards. So I will actually have to blur the kitten first for it to make sense. I'd recommend field blur, it's just more realistic than, than Gaussian. So... Uh... How does that look? Yeah, maybe we'll try we'll try eight pixels. <clears throat> oh, maybe just a bit too much. Something like six. I mean, and I'll be honest with you, like all, all of this stuff, if this was going to be like a finished thing, like I might polish this into a thumbnail or something for the for the stream. Um, I probably will spend like a good 30 minutes, 60 minutes on it, polishing it and trying to kind of remove all of these oddities. It kind of helps actually um, that this all is out of focus somewhat because it means that I could just blur it all, which will hide a lot of the mistakes anyway. So, um, yeah, as you can see, it does work out quite well in that regard. God, that's turned out a lot better than I thought. Anyway, back to this fire hand. Although I quite like the lightning hand. Um, it fits with the whole kind of blue thing going on, but... Yeah, it's struggling with fire. I'm loving the cat party. Excellent, Moosh. <laughs> Some plants in the background. Okay, Vipple, let's, let's, um, I'm just, there we go, a single flame. Let's try and take it back to something a little bit more normal. So, right, okay, struggling with fire flames. I find that surprising. I thought, like, generating a fire or a flame would be really, really easy. But, um, 
Maybe, hang on, let's just try this in a new document. Let's just try it in a new, maybe it's taking the picture of me and it's struggling to mesh the two together. What about if I just do that same sort of shape, but then type in fire? <laughs> I leave for a few minutes to do with my dog and now we have cats. Yeah, sorry, Reese. Got th things escalated. <laughs> Lots of cats. <laughs> okay, so it can do fire. It's just my hand that is confusing it. So let's try fire hand again. Because I want it like on a fist on the end. That sort of shape. Do you know, actually, I could work with that. Oh no! Whoa! That is that ain't a fire hand. Looks like something. Mm, I could work with this. Let's take this one in. Let's see. Hmm. Well, we've got a black background, so I can blend that with screen, which could work. I might have to distort this out of shape somewhat. Well, it's not the best thing, but it's not the worst. Just got to try and match the contours of the hands as best I can. Yeah, I think with a bit of time and patience, you probably could get something kind of usable there. Let's try and remove the black. Yeah, this is some. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Whoop. Hmm. Yeah, it looks it looks very flat at the moment. I think that would take I could get it to work, but I think it would take a lot of time to get the angle right. It probably helped to have a reference image as well. But let's try something a bit more simple. Let's, we've got a big space here. Let's put a plant in the back. Plant. Let's see what it adds. Remember when you said remove hand and it turned into a pigeon? I oh, know, I, every night. Oh, okay, interesting. You, I don't know if you can see it here, but I've actually got a mic stand around about here. So, okay, hang on, I'll tell you what. No, that we'll do that again. But first of all, I'll get it to remove this mic stand and just replace it with more desk and wall. So we'll leave it blank. <clears throat> we'll remove that first, then we'll put the plant in. Because I think that mic stand is causing a bit of a, an issue. There we go, number three, that's pretty good. You can see it's just kind of replaced all of that, which is nice. Now I can go and try and add in a giant plant. Plant. <laughs> just popping back in to let you know that I sent you more thicker based off some ideas that came to me in the stream yesterday. No, we don't talk about thicker, Quinton. <laughs> <laughs> not a plant he's just like hey what am i doing here what is going on that is not that i'm pretty sure that is not a plant <laughs> that's a leaf <laughs> that's a giant leaf do you know what i'll take my giant leaf 
This is this is what I meant, right? You can see that actually it's both incredible and hilarious. All right, fine. We'll give <laughs> googly eyes. If the leaf wants to to be here, who am I to turn the leaf away? And it's done a good job with the lighting as well. We've got a little bit of blue, very slight around some of these edges, and it's nicely lit on the right, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good looking leaf. How you doing? <laughs> I mean, he, I'll be honest. That leaf, um, that leaf looks in the eyes. He looks like he's had one smoke too many. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going on? If you're just joining the stream now, like, Lord help you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to check if, um, If Poppy's watching this, I've not seen uh, Popender in the chat. Ah, oh. this is fun. This is so fun. I'm gonna keep generating smiley faces. Should we give the leaf a hat? I don't know. Let's get creative. I wanted a tree, or well, not a tree, a plant in a pot. You know, something sensible. I, I can. Can we just have it on? You know, on record. I tried to bring it back to something sensible. Someone said plant. I was like, do you know what? Okay, let's stop just being being silly. We'll have a plant. And I get a giant leaf. So, you know, this isn't my fault. I did try. I tried to bring it back to some semblance of normal. But it just, uh, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, Toby said, hold my beer. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want a regular potted plant in your office? No. Have a giant leaf instead. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite getting the right mouth. Honestly, guys, if you haven't done this yet, download the um, Photoshop beta. Oh my god, I've got tears in my eyes. Download the Photoshop beta. It is, it's a ton of fun. It really is funny. But as you've also seen, it's incredibly useful as well guaranteed to give you a good time though what the fuck is looking so bizarre i went to the kitchen for five minutes what's happened <laughs> right just to fill you in phil okay what happened all right is i tried to create a potted plant adobe said no have a leaf and I thought, well, fine, you've given me a leaf. I'm going to add some googly eyes. And here we are. <laughs> Do you know what? I might have to, I might stick with that one. <clears throat> and it's, it, it's ever so slightly off, but uh, it's kind of got like a bit of a bend there around this part of the leaf. So I kind of like that. I could move that over. Oh, no, it's actually, oh, wow. It's actually AI'd part of the leaf. What I'd probably do is cut that out and just shimmy it over so that kind of crease lines up with the crease on the mouth. <laughs> Let's give him a hat. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> if you're new here, welcome to the Dansky channel. We do uh, professional design education. <laughs> Lipstick. Hey. Don Leaf. Oh, hello. <laughs> what are you doing behind there? Hey. Mexican Leaf. I like that hat as well. How do you spell it? Right, I'm going to. Oh, som, sombrero. I feel like we should go with a Mexican Leaf. We'll add some maracas as well or something. Anything else that's traditionally Mexican? 
Why has it got a person peeking behind, though? I don't... Uh... Have I spelt sombrero correctly? I don't know how generative AI handles spelling mistakes. That's probably the least of my worries, isn't it? Oh, ad lips! <laughs> What's with all these people just peeking around the edge? I just need... Right. I just need a sombrero. What about if I turn... me off? I got it. Let's hide me. And uh, oh, this is kind of cool actually. You can see all the AI generation on its own. Sombrero. Let's see if I can add it without the background kind of interfering in it because it kind of it seems to want to add people. <sighs> that ain't worked too well. That ain't worked too well. I tried to be clever, and it just, it ain't having it. Right, what was it someone said? Uh, okay, let's try red lips. Red, smiling lips. I think you should have a 10 gallon hat. What's a 10 gallon hat? Is that a thing? 10 gallon hat. Okay, let's let's try that. We'll try that then. Uh, ooh, that is uh Let's let's try pouting. <clears throat> I think because lips are part of the face, I don't know if it's gonna just generate me a pair of lips on its own. Although that's kind of what I need, so maybe I should. Again, that'd be a good. Oh, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, maybe I should go into like a new document and just generate the lips on their own. But um, this one seems to have, have worked this time. Sometimes you get cartoony illustration and sometimes you get something a bit more realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Shrek shit. <here. laughs> Add a wig. Okay, I think this is as good as we're going to get with the leaf. I think I'll go with this one. Uh, not with the leaf, sorry, with the lips. Oh, I don't know. I quite like those wonky ones, but then I quite like the teeth as well. Hello. Uh... <laughs> We're creating a character here. Toy Story 7, anyone? Hey, Dan. Is generative fill a lot more intensive on your PC than previous versions of Photoshop without it? Um, it's not something that I... I can't say that I've noticed it. And... Um, yeah, uh, up until recently, I was using a 2018 MacBook Pro, and it's, I mean, that's a five-year-old computer, but the spec's pretty decent on it. So I think the only kind of really experience I've had using it, it that's probably the the computer I use the most, and yeah, I don't know, actually, that's a really good question. Because I upgraded to a 14-inch MacBook Pro recently, and it's a, it's a lot faster. But actually, I mean, I'm on an uh, M1 Mac Mini right now, and this is the 2020 model, and actually it's generating these pretty quickly. So I wouldn't say that a faster computer necessarily generates faster. In fact, it might actually be, because this is communicating with Adobe's AI, it might actually be over the internet. So it might be more internet connection dependent. That's a really good question, actually. I should look into that. What am I even doing anymore? There we go. We got we got a few a few different lips to choose from. We'll. Uh, I quite like that one. I quite like that smiley face. But we've got lips there if we need them. So what? 
Someone, I swear someone had a good suggestion and I've forgotten what it was now. Eyebrows. I, we, can, we can try and add some eyebrows. Ah, this would be a good one to try. Uh, like a multi-selection. So if I just draw a selection here, hold shift and draw another one, and then type just eyebrows, one word, will it add both eyebrows? I think it will. I'm hopeful. Leaf Princess. That's the thing though, like I said earlier, like I could actually add this into one of my videos as long as... Oh, that's done a pretty good job! Yeah, as long as I don't move my hands over like to the right or anything. I could just have that in the corner. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I like this one. Because it's kind of, yeah, it sort of feels a bit more plastic like everything else. Oh, excellent. Oh, that's worked out pretty well. Oh, come on then. Let's add a let's add a nose with a... Hang on, let's make the selection. Come on, let's go full facial features. Nose with moustache. We may as well. We've gone halfway. Reese says, I freaking love my 2021 M1 Mini. As a spec, you can get them. It does sound, it does so well. Yeah, they're, they're good. Like, the one I got recently was just upgrading uh, to my first Apple Silicon <laughs> laptop. Um, just because I'd heard so many things about the M1, M2 chips and all that. And um, yeah, impressed so far. Very impressed. That's pretty decent. I'll give it one more go. And I like the fact that it's blue as well. Kind of fits in with the theme of the room, but also it's not just a white moustache because that would kind of blend in with the eyes and the smiley face and everything else. So trying to like, you know... Oh, that's quite good. Trying to focus on being educational for just, just a minute here. You know, creating um, that contrast between colour and design is quite important. We need some ears and a wig. <clears throat> I know we are. I feel like we're going kind of full Mr. Potato Head here. <laughs> it's going to be the new channel mascot. And uh, we're going to have to give this fella a name at the end as well. So if you've got a name for our new friend over here, then... Uh... Oh, do you know what? Saying that, that is a really good one. I know I just said about using too much white. If that was... I love that. The shape of that is perfect. I just wish it was a different colour. Hand purple piece. No, hand hand purple blue piece. I don't know why that took so long to say. Hey Dan, please have fun with mid journey. Yeah, I've played around with it a bit. I got to be honest, the whole AI thing, I'm kind of Everything just seems to be AI this and that all the time now. I'm kind of a bit exhausted with it all. Um, <clears throat> and Mid Journey is definitely impressive. I know it's quite controversial, so I've sort of, I've kind of stayed out a lot of the AI stuff. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I've stayed out a lot of the AI stuff, and I've kind of played around with it a little bit, just in my spare time. But um, I've just kind of been sat back observing listening to conversations, seeing what people are saying about it, different opinions all over the place, and just trying to figure out how I feel about it. Um, I still don't think human beings can be trusted not to destroy ourselves and the entire planet, but I feel like there's there's some there's some less ethical uses of AI, and there's some actually useful uses of AI. And... Uh, yeah, so it's been interesting to kind of just sit back and observe how people are using it differently and in different ways and just kind of see what people are saying about those different uses, if that makes sense. That's generally how I learn. I don't, um, I don't react. I try not to react emo emotionally straight away, but I'll just kind of sit back and quietly observe and see what, what people say, how it's used possibly try and look at where it's going and just um, spend a bit of time formulating how I actually feel about it. I can tell you right now that 
creating stuff in mid journey i can see the use and there's a few things i've done recently where it has been useful but create like spending ages typing in prompts to create like an incredible 3d image that looks really cool i just don't have any emotional attachment to that like when i create something in photoshop like a full on kind of piece of art there's a there's a I, I put everything into that it takes a lot of skill and there's talent involved and um and what i end up with by going through that that journey that process of creating is something that i'm i've got like an emotional connection to and i'm very proud of and i just i don't get that with ai you know it just sort of i put put in some prompts and it spits out this brilliant thing at the end um and even putting any of the kind of, you know, ethical things aside, uh, I just, I don't have a, a connection to something that is, has been generated for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I like features in Photoshop that facilitate creativity. I am less inclined to use features that actually do the creativity for me. And that's where I find generative fill very interesting because Photoshop has features to replace all of this up here. You know, this isn't like uh, I'm not asking to generate me an entire room. It's just I need to fill this top part of the ceiling. Yeah, I can use clone tools and content aware and all this stuff, but generative AI actually just makes it very easy to do that. So that's a, I like that. That's a really helpful time-saving use of AI. But then, um, yeah, it's really difficult. It's, it's difficult kind of uh, trying to sort of, trying to kind of box box everything in your mind and where do you draw the line and, yeah. So I think, I think yeah, that's what, that's kind of where I sort of stand on it all is I like, I like being the one that comes up with the creative ideas and the tech and the software can help me implement those ideas. When, when, um, AI actually comes up with the idea and I didn't create it, that's when I'm just, I have less of a connection to the final result, if that makes sense. <clears throat> and I like going through the process. Going through the process and doing stuff is how I learn. So when everything nowadays is AI this and AI that, AI blah, 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 it's like, it's subverting that learning experience where I'm kind of actually getting better at the craft and everything just becomes about AI and you know that's I just I don't find it very fun <laughs> I like doing the thing and learning the skills you know name suggestion Lee Phil Philodendron <laughs> stayed away until today yeah it is, it's definitely worth playing around with if, if you've stayed away from AI I think I think generative Phil at the moment, it kind of feels like um, no man's land. It's kind of like that that sort of middle balance of... Um, in fact, I think I remember actually saying, one of my, the first things I said was when Adobe launched Firefly, I was kind of like, my initial reaction was um, just like, yeah, it's cool, but I would kind of prefer more features in Photoshop that use AI rather than just kind of doing the the stuff kind of automatically for me and then not long after that they announced generative fill and i was like okay kind of possibly got what i asked for and so it's um this is more with this this is a feature that i actually do find useful being able to replace parts of a scene quickly mock up cats in my hands and a giant leaf with a face and a mustache um you know so But yeah, it's definitely it's definitely got its use or uses. Add hair to the leaf. Right, we can try that. We can try and add some hair to the leaf. Okay. Add hair. What about something coming out of your laptop screen? Ooh, that would be challenging. That would be very challenging. Let's see if it does it though. Can the generative fill fix destroyed old photo, especially faces? No, I don't think it, I think it struggles with faces a bit. I think faces are not a, not a strong point of AI. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Um, 
Let's do a few more. That's not bad straight off the bat. I quite like that. Leafy cat. It seems like a suitable haircut for a, for a leaf. <laughs> Why is my generative fill not working? It's saying bad request. Oh, that's odd. Try try putting a full stop after your prompt. And what happens if you type no prompt and just literally just click generate? Whoa, that's I mean this is the this is the crazy thing. Like look at this, right? Like it's identified that top No, it's redrawn the leaf. It's reshaped part of the leaf to have the hair attached from that point. I mean that is nuts. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm actually like I'm spending time deciding between these as if this is like remotely serious. <laughs> I think I think that's a good one. We've got a nice bit uh Oh, the way that sort of hair twists though is quite nice. Let's do a few more. Then we'll try and make something come out of the screen, see if that works. <clears throat> Uh, okay, we'll go back to that one, I think. There we go. Right, something coming out of the screen. Um, oh, let's just let's just do that. Something coming out of the screen. I don't know how Photoshop deals with actual statement prompts, like proper sentences versus just single words. Add a drop of water. Add a drop of water with the leaf. Add skinny hands and legs as sneakers. What is that? Oh, it's give it's giving me another arm. It it, it doesn't have a clue. It <laughs> it doesn't have a clue. It's just literally it's done that something. Yeah. Octopus. Oh, yeah, tentacles. It can't recognize the screen. No, it, keeps, it seems to want to just... Hey, do you want an extra arm? <laughs> Have an extra arm. I mean, it's not the worst implementation of a new arm, is it? That, see, that's... that's in, I mean, it's done a better job on the hand as well. The fingers are a bit stumpy, but if I were to go through here and just do this, keep the laptop. <clears throat> it's tried to replicate the tattoos. And actually, it's done a very good job. It's even actually tried to replicate the style of my tattoo. It's very kind of my style's realism. Um, it's very blurry, but uh, I wonder if I could actually... Let's try and get rid of this hand. Do you know what? Let's just get rid of this hand. And I'll uh, I'll take my new hand. We'll keep the prompt blank and see what it does. <laughs> I, I wish I had an extra arm. It would be so handy. Oh, come on, Tom. <laughs> are we off to Pun City, are we? Right, ah, oh, it's not going to remove that arm, is it? Remove arm. Please. Try something like burst of paint. That Yeah, that would be cool. A secret portal in the wall. Oh, I like it, Phil. Good ideas today, Phil. Popinda, hello. Oh, um, yeah, Poppy, this is what we've been working on. <laughs> Don't ask. Don't ask. You're a little late, yeah, but you've missed probably 90% of the insanity. Oh my goodness, I know. Look, I 
I absolve any responsibility from myself. This was all the chat. This is everyone in the chat. You know, I'm, I'm innocent here. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's not going to get rid of that arm, is it? So I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to try and figure out how to do it myself. Makes me sound really lazy, doesn't it? Oh, God. Well, I suppose I can use Photoshop myself then, if I have to. Um, why is it struggling to remove that? I wonder. Maybe I need to get rid of the whole arm. <clears throat> Please make a cup of tea on your hand. It's famous in India. A cup of tea, we could do that. Drop of water from outside. What do you think? It's not going to remove the arm, is it? If I just put black. Will it give me something? I just need something in there. It's quite a dark image and I'm wearing a black t-shirt anyway, so I could probably get away with it. I just It's not having it, is it? It's not having it. it... Mm, that's annoying. Oh, hang on. Was it being covered up? Yeah, it's still not getting rid of it. Hello? Is that you, Mum? I think my mum's here. It's either my mum or my brother. Someone's come in. I think they're uh, they're probably trying to be quiet because uh, because I'm streaming, but uh, I thought it would be fun to show them <laughs> exactly what we've been working on. Yeah, it's not having it, is it? I really want that other arm, though. All right. <clears throat> I'm just going to have to do it myself. In fact, what I'll probably do, actually, I'll do a really lazy version of this. Just grab black. For the t-shirt fill that in down there boom 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 and then we'll grab black from the desk like i say it's a very dark image and it's not like i'm working with precision at the moment with all this ai this ai stuff's pretty rough around the edges so this part here can afford to be rough as well and i can always polish this up and Stick more background and desk in there if I need to. Here we go. That will do for now. There you go. You can't really see the difference. Maybe just a little bit of shadow. There we go. Nice. And I've got my extra arm in there. Fantastic. Pippa and I are watching you. <laughs> Hello, Pippa. Hopefully you enjoy whatever it is I'm doing right now. Let's meet the family. Mm. Pippa is our next door neighbor. So um, yeah, everyone say hi to Pippa. And to Poppy. Right. Oh, we were coming up with names for the leaf. Maybe we could call it Pippa. We could have Pippa the leaf. Oh. Right. Uh, where did I get to? <laughs> portal. Yes, Phil said about doing a portal. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do... Um, hold on. We'll type in portal first and see what we get. Raining. Is it possible? Um... I've got no idea. We could try it. It would be much easier to add rain in Photoshop. Uh, that is... That's definitely not a portal. I don't know what that is. Um, is there another name for like a, like a space portal or vortex? Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you too. Thank you for joining the stream. 
I hopefully see you on the next one. What on earth is that leaf? That leaf is Pippa. What are these weird symbols? Let's try Vortex. I want like a like a like a teleporter. A black hole, that's a yes. That's a good good way of putting it. Let's try black hole in a minute. Oh, we're getting getting closer. Let's try and black hole. It's gonna just like plonk a circle down now, isn't it? Hmm. It's doing it in a weird shape as well. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, is that because it's? Oh, right. That's because it needs to be on top. Okay. So there is more. They're they're pretty they're pretty bad. Swirling black hole vortex. Yeah, they're not the best, are they? Teleporter. Hmm. Octopus. That was it. Yes. Someone said tentacles. Portal in the wall. Okay. Right. Wormhole. Nice. I like it. Oh, I just spat my coffee everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, it's the cat on the wall. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I've got coffee in my beard now. Okay, we're sort of getting there. Portal in the wall. Put the coffee down and transition onto sparkling water. Okay. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, what about hole in the wall? If I try typing a hole in the wall, it's kind of giving me a cluster of kittens instead, which isn't really what I'm after. It, yeah, it's sort of getting better. It's, I mean, well, it depends how you define better. Oh, that, okay, that is better. That is like a, an actual hole. That's probably the best I'm gonna get, but we could have something coming through that hole. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe a dinosaur? <laughs> I mean, surely it's going to generate like a cartoon something. <laughs> okay, that's sort of better than I thought it would be. Um, let's... Give it a bit more, a bit more space. Dinosaur breaking through a window. I mean, I could try and add a window in there. You need to include the bottom of the hole. Um. Oh, <laughs> what is that? Oh, what, what's those things called in submarines? Is it a porthole? Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what this one kind of reminds me of a little bit. Window with space and stars outside. Okay. Porthole with a big fish swimming by oh, we're getting oh, well, well I think we're getting better although saying that we started off in a pretty uh, abysmal place so it's not much of an improvement but 
Hmm. Porthole. What was it you put? Window with space and star. Okay. Window with space and stars outside. Maybe a normal window. We'd have more luck with that. I mean, we could even change the entire scene. We could actually get rid of the foam soundproofing. No, it's not having it, is it? <laughs> oh, that one's not too bad. I wonder if I uh, bump up the contrast of that one. I wonder if that... Bring the darkness down. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that could work. Just quickly fudge that around the edge there. Well, it's not the worst thing I've created. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We could actually try, if I just bundle all this together, we could try and change out the entire background. I don't know how that would work, but we could try. Let's just do a test first. We'll see if I can... kind of go around me. Really rough. See if it recognizes what I'm trying to do. I'm hoping it does. And uh, jungle background. Try adding 3D before the prompt. I don't know. I, th I think it, it will do 3D stuff if it needs to. I think it kind of d determines um, itself. Wow. That's that's actually really impressive. Damn. Wow. That's crazy. Like it's it's not exactly a a jungle like I thought it would be, but the fact it's kind of gone around everything. That's pretty cool. I think the only problem I've got is some of the elements that we've added. Um, okay, so there are some... There's a few better ones. So we've got a brick wall there. If I turn this on... Yeah, you can see some of these elements do have the foam on them. So the foam is kind of integral to what I've done. So I think, yeah, next time I, what I would do is change the background first. Because what I could do is I could go around and mask all this out now. It wouldn't take too long to quickly select subject and mask out all the foam. But um, yeah, if I put that on top, it kind of blends with our leaf a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it wouldn't take too long. It would be a little bit of work doing it this way. But I could go around and I could add... Um, What am I saying? <laughs> I could go around and uh, add the background back in, but I should have done the background first. It would have made my life a heck of a lot easier. What is it with these squid on these lives? Um, hmm. Tentacles. Yes, yeah, someone said about tentacles coming out the screen. Let's try tentacles. an astronaut anyone else have a ridiculous crush on him or is it just me uh, <laughs> thanks Kyle <laughs> desert background yeah uh, whoa 
That's that's really weird. Is it just put an octopus in my hand? Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that. Um. Okay. Lots of tentacles. Lots of tentacles. Right. Let's try this one. I kind of, I know what I want. I want the tentacles coming out of the screen. Oh no. It's just given me a, a cluster of tentacles. Tentacles coming out a screen. I mean, I suppose this is where you could use something like Mid Journey if you wanted to. You could just have some tentacles, get it to generate some on a black background and then cut them out and plonk them in. So you're kind of, I guess, sort of generating assets independently of anything else. Um, or just search on stock sites for tentacles. I know something like Invato Elements have got a really good 3D library. They've got quite a few tentacles on there that I've used before. And uh, they're 3D models that you can rotate and they have transparent backgrounds and you just download them as a PSD with that transparency and then you can just drop them in so um yeah i think it's 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 good it's very very interesting this generative fill in uh in this photoshop beta but there's definitely out of all the different tools and platforms that i'm subscribed to there's some that do things better than others and um i think yeah it's it's good to know all of them because then you can think okay well this is what i'm trying to create like like this has been a lot of fun. We've we've got quite a lot done here, but then I can go. Okay, well I need tentacles. I can go to Invato Elements for that, and then if I need something else, I can go over here to I don't know Adobe Stock and get something there, or or I can just generate it in Photoshop with Generative Fill. So I don't know. It just kind of gives you more options. You know, more more tools in the tool bag. Looks like the beginning of a wild nature show. Well, it's the beginning of something for sure. I mean, it's pretty wild that this is where we started and this is where we are now. I mean, um, you know, I I've had fun. I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> mm. Oh, just before we close out then, let's do one more um, without my face, just to make things different. And we're just going to quickly build a scene from scratch. So. You know, throw some ideas in the chat. We need a scene. Uh, we need some things to go in the scene. And I'm just going to try and very quickly kind of see if we can uh, bring some, generate some AI stuff and then composite them together. We'll see how that goes. Probably terribly, but it'll be fun nonetheless. So yeah, a scene, some stuff to go in the scene. And um, we'll see if it can generate stuff purely from scratch without me kind of giving it an image as a starting point. Stoyan, I don't know if it will work by giving it more context, like tentacles coming out from the bottom right. Yeah, I think it would need it would need a lot more time and polish. I think the tentacles would look pretty cool. A snail, a cave in a space. Right, first of all, we'll need a background first, so I'm gonna we'll do that first. I'm not gonna make the same mistake again, but then Oh Jay! Ha! Hey dude! <laughs> I didn't even see the name then. I was just like, a snail. Yeah, of course. We'll put a snail in there. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, me and Jay went to school together many, many moons ago. <laughs> Good to see you, man. <laughs> right, we're going to... A cave in space. Well, can it... Can it generate a cave in space? I've got no idea, but we'll try. Let's see what it comes back with. I mean, that's not bad as a first go, is it? Ooh. Oh, this looks like, yeah. I feel like space snail or like snail alien. Snailian. Yeah, I like that. 
All right, let's add a snail. We'll start with a normal snail, see how we get on. This looks like it could be like a hive of like a cluster of alien. Oh, look at that, that is brilliant, excellent. Okay, right, so we've got ordinary snail. And you can see as part of that, it is including the background. So we would definitely write to do the background first. Um, now I want to try alien snail. Because this is a space cave after all. So it's not going to necessarily have earth snails. Add a pinball machine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that? Oh, that is freaky. Ugh. Yeah. There we go, Jay. How's that for you? Space alien snail. Mm. That's the one. That's the one, I think. That's the one. I mean, look at that. Shadows, lighting light over here look at this it's even casting the glow oh i see what it's done there okay so it's not casting a glow it's actually redrawn that part of the image but then it's actually casting the glow onto the snail and we've got the shadows over here so it does take lighting into account okay space alien snail excellent Perfect. Excellent. Space alien snail. What else are we going to add? A pinball machine. <laughs> I don't know where. Uh, maybe over here in the corner. Maybe they um, invaded Earth and stole a pinball machine and took it back with them. I want the snail to be massive in the cave because these are space alien snails, of course. So the pinball machine needs to be kind of smaller to make them look giant you know i mean considering this is two with two images in this is actually um turned out quite well that is not a pinball machine that is definitely not a pinball machine give him some headphones cat bats from the roof bats nice I mean, it, it looks kind of more like a like an EV charging station. It's not a pinball machine. Um, all right, we'll put a pin in that one, no pun intended. Uh, I'll leave it there. I don't know what it is, but it kind of looks... Let's just say it's some space alien snail apparatus, and we'll, so we'll leave that there. Um, bats. What would you call, like, a cluster of bats coming out of a cave? You wouldn't, you wouldn't call it a cluster, would you? Like a horde? A flurry of bats? Um, what's it called? You know that you have a school of fish. What would it be for bats? Poppy says, oh, that's a cute snail. It's not meant to be a cute snail. It's meant to be a, a an evil space alien snail. Those bats are too big. And give him some headphones. I like that idea. Come on then, let's give him some headphones. I don't know if it's going to generate some kind of big over-ear headphones or maybe a smaller set of AirPods. I don't know. A colony of bats. Okay. A cauldron. Whoa. What is going on there? Okay. Let's <laughs> put headphones on his head. <laughs> Has it replaced his antenna with headphones? It's just kind of, it's just kind of like plonked them on. I suppose he doesn't really have ears, does he? So it's not really, he's not sure where to put them. I'm kind of hoping if I keep generating, I'll get one. Oh, it is called a, wait. Uh... A cauldron of bats. Oh, that is a thing. Wow. Did you know that or did you look that up? I didn't know that. I feel like I've learned something today. Despite all of this, I have actually learned something. Um, hmm. 
Well, I mean, I was going to say that these headphones are a bit weird, but he doesn't have any ears, so any implementation of this is going to be a bit weird. I do kind of like this. I don't know what it is. It's like a like a headphone circuit or something. Or oh, we've just got headphones here floating on his head. Ah, uh, they work kind of well as well. They're cool. They're blue. Ten bats. Okay, yeah, all right. Let's see if it handles numbers. Because I tried this before on the um, the photo of my studio before. I tried typing in floating white shelf to get another shelf on the side of the room. And it just it generated it brilliantly, but it was too big. Um, let's try ten bats. So I think it might be struggling with scale at the moment, you know, making things smaller or bigger. So we'll see if it deals with numbers. An AK-47. <laughs> That's definitely going to breach Adobe's guidelines. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, what is that? Okay, numbers. It can't handle numbers. Um, let's type lots of small bats. No, we'll type a cauldron of bat. It's going to do a cauldron, isn't it? It's going to generate a literal cauldron. Floyd says, how about an off-focus and blurred bat on the front? That'd be quite a good way to go. I think I think to have context, though, with that kind of approach, you, yeah, you could have a bat flying towards the screen and you could add a path blur to make it look like it's flying in a direction. But then normally you'd have smaller bats in the background that would um, kind of give that some context. J just for fun, let's just... i got to see. i got to see. Adobe, will you let me generate an AK-47? I don't think it's going to do that. <laughs> Can I type in gun? Will it let me generate a gun? Come on, you've got to let me generate a gun. Oh, come on. That can't breach user guidelines. Could be a toy gun or a, a glue gun. Oh, that's rubbish. Okay, so we've got headphones. Um, what else? A toy gun. If I type toy gun, then I wonder if it will let me do that. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. I'm guessing they're being careful because this AI stuff could generate something unpredictable. So I'm guessing if it were to generate something highly inappropriate that they maybe could end up in some legal trouble. I don't know. So I, you know, I kind of see why they're being careful with it. <laughs> but I wanted an AK-47, damn it. Right. Someone else said something else really good. What was it? Um... The snail needs a satellite dish attached to the shell. It's required. Okay, we'll try that on his back, yeah? Uh, okay, let's go satellite dish. Satellite dish. A video game weapon. Yeah, it seems to be... doesn't seem to like weaponry of any kind. Uh, oh, I kind of need it. looks like it's behind. I sort of need it in front. Eh, that's, that's unfortunate. Mm. Satellite dish. Let's try another one. I just need one. Oh, I need one in front. And then what I'm going to do is try and just retouch this very quickly and see if I can get this looking half decent. Um, hmm. Do you know what? I could actually try and generate a satellite dish on its own. Let's see. Generate that there. Boom. Satellite dish. As long as it gets the angle semi-correct. I could probably Photoshop it together. 
someone coming in the back of the cave. Oh, like a silhouette or something. Oh, like an astronaut or someone coming in. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, this could work. There, there we go. That's what I needed. So sometimes, yeah, you just got to kind of, you know, chance it and generate it in isolation of everything else. Oh, no, it's got the black. Oh, I didn't want that. Oh, can I generate on transparency? Satellite dish. Yeah, let's see if I can get something on transparency. Can you try and use the word attached? Um, what? <laughs> More snails from a distance entering the cave to meet their leader. Okay, so it seems intent on adding a background. That's fine. I was going to try and be lazy and cut this out. Uh, can I get select subject? Please. Uh, that's not too bad. I'll take that. That's fine. And I think that's one of the best ways to use select subject is for when I'm doing any kind of retouching work, I will use that because it's a quick and easy way to do it. Um, but usually I will pen tool the final result. Or if I'm really confident about a particular design. If I'm not and I'm still kind of in the sort of conceptualization phase, I will cut things out quick because it's all masked. So I can very easily go back and polish it later on. Okay, and this is this is the trick to compositing. To be perfectly honest with you, don't don't start messing around with the lighting or anything until you've got everything kind of set exactly how you'd like it. So I think for this one, so we're just kind of getting that composition correct first, and I'm just going to mask this off here down and have this kind of connecting directly into the shell and then this metal bit here this can be like a prong going into the shell there we go going into there so the dish is kind of attached This one, how could I do this? Do this very lazily, there we go. Just quickly, just plonk that in there. Something like that is uh, is good enough for now. And uh, God, it's been a minute since I've done some retouching. We'll see how this goes. I've been doing a lot of Illustrator stuff recently, so. There we go, that looks pretty decent. Oh, one thing I will just try and generate quickly is somebody coming into the cave. Um, astronaut silhouette. That would just kind of be the icing on the cake, I think. And then we'll try and um, very quickly do some lighting and we'll see how it goes. Got to go, Dan. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the crack. See you soon. Cheers, Phil. Thank you for joining, man. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Ooh. <laughs> Should we select the snail layer first to implement the dish better? Sometimes the background is selected by default. That's a good question, actually. I'm not entirely sure if it matters what you select or if it takes what you're actually... I feel like it takes that whole area, like it takes everything, all of the different layers into into account. Um, that's why I've been pretty nondescript about what layers I'm selecting. Okay, maybe. <clears throat> actually, I just need the kind of... the. Uh, the right shape, really, for the astronaut, because I can silhouette him myself. Standing. Whoa, what's going on with that arm? It's like he's doing the robot. Um, all right, let's get rid of silhouette because that's easy to do. So we've had we've had a lot of fun with um, with this, but this this will be the useful bit. So if you want to get better at retouching, the bit I'm going to show you in a minute is uh, the, probably going to be the most useful part of the stream. 
we'll try a few more. That's that's a pretty good one. I could work with that. Um, I think I'll make him s smaller, actually. Can I make him smaller, or has he got the background as part of him? Yeah, he's got the background. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to make a much smaller selection because I want this snail to be massive astronaut so I kind of really want to maintain that sense of scale okay it insists on them uh, on them flying flying through the hole doesn't it I put a scuba diver <laughs> I don't think it would make sense we're not underwater give him a hat. Why <laughs> does everything have to have a hat? It really does struggle with just giving me an astronaut standing up, doesn't it? Maybe I should generate one on it. Hey! <laughs> let's just, let's... I just, I just need an... I just need a normal looking astronaut just stood there. Not like a floating one. It keeps giving me floating ones. Okay, let's ignore the astronaut for now. I can add in an astronaut uh, later on. I uh, will just try and generate one. Just before I completely write it off, I will try and generate one here on its own. I think what's happening is it's seeing that kind of hole with the light coming through and it's trying to make the astronaut float through the hole. So if I generate one now, it might just give me an astronaut. Nope. Clearly not. <sighs> well, it was wishful thinking, wasn't it? I love this channel. Amazing. That's very kind of you. Yeah, it's still beta at the moment. The uh, generative fill features, I think, um, at Adobe Max, I'm guessing they'll be kind of fully released into the world. Cool. It's not giving me just a normal astronaut, isn't it? I've learned a lot from this channel. Amazing. Oh, that's really good to hear. He's doing a little dance. Could I use that one? Maybe. I kind of like his suit. Let's see if I can um, plonk him in and stretch him up. Oh, I could make that work. It looks a, bit, it looks a little bit creepy, like he's kind of like half zombie, half tiptoeing. We could try and use Puppet Warp. Oh, oh, oh hello! <laughs> oh, where are we going? Oh, dear. Calm down, Dan. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> da 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 Right. Come on, stop being silly. There is a, oh, there is a really useful trick with Puppet Warp. I can't remember what it is. Ah, there we go. Alter option. That's it. You hold alter option and you can actually, if I move, oops. No. Yeah, so I'll add the pins first. We'll pin there, we'll pin his chest. Pin his helmet, I want that to stay upright. I'll pin the legs and we'll pin the hands. Hold alter option and then I can rotate. So rather than just kind of going, whoa, I can actually just make very subtle movements. <laughs> hey, da 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 uh, da 
I'm just trying to see if I can make his feet. If I can straighten them up and bring them together and make it look actually like he's walking. And if I tilt him there, I could probably try and make him look up as if he's looking up as he comes into the cave. And the feet looks like he's on his tiptoes, but if I go let's smart object this. I don't want the puppet warp and the liquify to kind of mess around with each other. They can sometimes interfere. What I would do is it looks like he's on tiptoes. So if I grab liquify and go down here and squish in. I could try and squish his feet up and make it look a bit more like shoes. And then this one's up on his tiptoe as he's kind of taking a step. Could be worse. And you could probably, I could probably, if I wanted to spend more time with it, I could puppet warp his, actually he does look a bit, does look a bit weird. It's like he's very kind of sort of big and bulky. Let's try and see if I can warp those arms into um, something that just looks a bit more like a natural pose. No. Oh, okay. Maybe puppet warp. There's usually a tool in Illust uh, in not Illustrator in Photoshop that's best for everything. And it's just a case of usually finding which one it is. Pin in the shoulders, and that's that's a good tip for if you're working with um, humans. You know, <laughs> humans. I say that like I'm not one. Um, people just. Uh, put pins in like the, the joints, like the shoulders, the elbows, the hands, the wrists, and then you can kind of move those body parts freely. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's not too bad. He kind of looks like he's, he looks like he's lost his wallet and he's rummaging around for some change. But I think it's possibly, yeah, that just looks like he's just some sort of, like a bit of an oaf. Do you know what I mean? Whereas that looks... I don't know. And it seems like I'm being very um, particular here. It's just I want to do get this bit right before I go into the retouching bit. Yeah, okay, that'll do for now. I'm happy with that. There we go. Boom. So let's just, uh, we'll copy all of this, we'll duplicate it. So I've got like a before and an after. Uh, we can get rid of that. We don't need the, I'll leave the pinball machine there just in case. We'll go before and after. Right, hopefully this bit's gonna be useful. The entire stream so far may have just been a clown show, but I'm going to try and actually teach you something useful. So if you like Photoshop, photo art, and retouching and that kind of thing, photo manipulation, then hopefully this will be helpful. So the first thing I like to do is, uh, it's all going to go wrong now, isn't it? Is I add a hue saturation adjustment layer and just strip out the color. The reason I'm going to do this is because the main thing that you need to get right and the thing that can easily go wrong with retouching is balancing exposure and balancing color. I do this all the time, um, not so much nowadays, but I used to where I would just run before I could walk and I would try and do them both at the same time and it would all fall apart. So what this does by adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer is we're stripping out all of the color and this enables me to focus purely on getting the exposure right. Obviously, these um, these images all have completely different colors. It's not that bad, considering it's been generated with AI. It's taken into account the glows and the hues and things. But normally, you know, the snail image might be warmer, the background might be colder, and so you kind of you have to do a lot more work. But I think it'll be a bit easier this time round. But it's mostly the exposure. So we've got the astronaut here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer. 
make sure I clip it to the astronaut so it only affects him. And then I can just darken him down. We're going to silhouette him out. Just leave a little bit of detail creeping through there. For now. And yeah, offset as well. Because there's a light source behind him. It's going to be quite light kind of coming in. So something like that. And then what else have we got? We've got the snail. So we've got the snail. That's the main one. So we'll start with an exposure adjustment there. You can use levels and curves. It is entirely up to you. Um, you know, whether you prefer working with shadows, midtones, and highlights, or exposure and gamma correction. Off topic chat is that what's going on in the chat? Guys, what's going on? <laughs> is it all kicking off? <laughs> Come on, guys. All be nice, or you'll go in timeout. Or Poppy will time you out, one of us. Right. So let's uh, remember to clip that to the alien snail layer. Ah, oh, this is okay. This is where it's going to be a problem because it's captured the background in that. So, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to select the snail and the mask, and I'm going to have to make a quick selection. And then this is where it's going to come in, uh, really come in handy. Is I can now make that selection. I've lost my shadows though, so I'm going to show you a really cool trick to get them back. Let's undo that. And what I'll do is I'll duplicate this and I'll call this layer down here Alien Snail Shadows. All right. I'm going to set that layer to multiply. And obviously that looks awful. We'll hide it for a second and then go back to my main snail layer. And now I'm going to go select subject. And then mask the alien. So I've got the alien snail on his own, but I've got no shadows. Now I'm going to turn back on the shadows and it creates this horrible box. But if I add a layer mask, holding alter option so it adds a blank one with the brush tool a nice soft brush and white is the fill color I can brush back in those shadows now I don't want to brush out to the edge because of course I've got a big hard edge there but I can brush all these shadows back in kind of as much or a little little as I like I'll brush in loads here there we go shadow shadow a few more shadows here and then just where I've pushed it a bit too far remove all of that there we go so now I've got the shadows on one layer and I've got the alien on another layer and I could even bring the shadows down if I want actually the best way to blend shadows onto an image is like this There we go. Just because doing it this way retains the texture underneath, whereas if I just bring that the opacity down, um, it just it doesn't al it doesn't allow the texture to blend through. It's very difficult. Right. Uh, okay, so I've isolated the snail. Now I need to go and adjust the exposure. Alok says, does generated AI has the same resolution as that of the original image, or do we have an option to set the resolution? Not that I know of. I think a lot of the stuff at the moment generated is kind of lower res or a bit blurry in cases. But um, yeah, if I zoom in here. Like, I'm not sure. It's a good question. If I, if I created an 8K document, you know, a massive document, for example, um, I wonder if it would create a much higher res snail. I'm not entirely sure. So, right, I've added the uh, exposure adjustment layer. I'm clipping it to the layer. I'm going to darken this now. 
and I'm going to try and create the darkest point of the snail. Obviously, there's a little bit there it's missed out, so... Let's try and add that back in. Why has it missed that? How strange. Well, that is bizarre. <laughs> no idea why it's done that. Uh, oh. What? Why is there a floating bit of snail? Oh, the headphones! Oh, no. Okay. All right, I've got to select subject on this now. This is this is where it gets complicated using the old uh, the old AI. Okay, let's let's put that on there. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. We've got the headphones on. So what I'm going to have to do is merge the headphones and the alien into their own smart object and then apply the exposure adjustment layer to all of it. Now it's captured that in the selection. Again, let's strip out the color. And alien snail. So now this is nice and dark. This is cool. And then with the exposure adjustment layer selected, what I can do is I can start to go and brush away some of those shadows and introduce some highlights along the edge. Now I'm going to do this pretty quickly, but doing it quickly it usually doesn't always give the best results. This is something that if I rush this now, it will it can still go wrong. You know, even if you've got lots of experience, if you rush your highlights and your shadows, um, it can look terrible. But nonetheless, I'm going to try and do it really quickly just to kind of show you. So I'm just adding some highlights along this top edge here. And that is the highlight coming from the, the tunnel. And I can use this nice soft feathered brush to just plonk in some more there. So I'm going over to the light source and just clicking. And it's adding that light and then I can go and adjust the I could make this even darker if I wanted to all of this is still fully adjustable so if I didn't want it to be as dark something like this and then just have maybe maybe a bit more of that light kind of spilling over and then down here just kind of putting some of those shadows back in and then maybe around here we've got the light this side as well don't forget so you're gonna get like a little bit of light spilling over here and then maybe around the edge just some more pronounced highlights like that So there we go, we've got the two different light sources. And then what I would do is I would add another exposure adjustment layer and I would darken this one down even more. And, oops. Floyd says, Dan, do you think Adobe will monetize the generative fill separately? I don't know. Possibly. Possibly. If it, if it is popular, which I suspect it might be with everything kind of trending towards AI, it would not surprise me. So then what I would do is hide this and now I'm going to brush in a few more shadows along this bottom edge. And down here, just kind of where the snail meets the ground. And then just drop the opacity and brush in a few more here as well. Because this bit here kind of right underneath his whatever this 
new strange antenna is. And not to mention this headphone is going to obviously be casting a shadow as well. There's going to be like a lot more shadowing here. And then I can go and make this darker as well if I need to. I can always turn the black and white off and see how it looks. Uh, it's not too bad. As you can see, it's it's um, definitely, you know, there's no grading there whatsoever. And then there, there's a bit. Um, this bit here definitely needs some work as well. So let's go back to the other layer. And I think I talked about this yesterday as well. If you just kind of blank it over the color, it doesn't really help it have much depth. Whereas what I need to do really, which does take time, is to go through and this part of the shell is curved. So I'd add like a lighter bit along here and then have these bits a little bit um, lighter. But that bit through the middle would be lighter because it's higher up catching the light and that's what's going to create some more depth. So down here I've got shadows. In this crease, this crack here, I've got shadows and the middle bit is raised because it's curved it's higher up so it's catching a bit more light um, and again I'm doing this very quickly but that's how you create better looking highlights and shadows not just like oh I'm just gonna blanket it over and if you have a tablet it's a heck of a lot easier as well so uh, right so for a rim light, you know, you could go down here. This is going to be very difficult using a mouse, but I'll try it anyway. Something like that. Maybe down here on his head. Oops. And then adding a bit more shadow down here. So it's just thinking about where the light source is really kind of up here and then where you would add your shadows. And if they're a bit strong, you can always just bring those down a little bit. And you can see I've switched back to color now. Um, what I'm actually going to do is a lot of the image up here, even the dark parts of the cave, it's not black. You might be able to see that. It's actually a very dark gray. The snail has a lot of black. So what I'm going to do is group all of the snail stuff. Oops. Missed one out. So group all of the snail and then I'm actually going to add a levels adjustment layer. Clip that to the snail. And what am I going to do? Just bring up those midtones slightly. Maybe the midtones and then bring up the blacks. Yeah, that's right. So then the darkest part of the caves, these very dark greys here, they're going to match the darkest part of the snail. So you kind of need to almost define the darkest part of your image. What is like black in this image, the darkest part? Because you can see the astronaut here, he's not black, he's a very, very dark grey. The dark shadows in the cave, they're not black, they're a very dark grey, even all the way up in this corner. If I sample that color uh, with the background selected, you can see there it's not quite black. It's just very, very dark gray. And then if I go down here, I want to be sampling a simple, simpler color. And you could see on there it is very, very similar. So I've done a pretty, pretty decent job there. Um, so if I turn this layer off and where is it gone? Where is me snail? This one. Turn the levels off and on. That was before. So the lighting on the snail was done, but the snail was too dark compared to the shadows, midtones, and highlights in the rest of the image. So if I turn this back on, you can see I've fixed the shadows now. The darkest point of the snail, the darkest shadow, matches the darkest part of the cave as well. Um, and then I could go through now and uh, I'll work in color because I'm kind of I'm kind of used to it. So the astronaut, 
I'm going to bring down the, the offset and just make, he can be a, a little bit darker and we can hide a bit more, a bit more detail there. He's got like a blue, a blue light on his suit. So what I'm going to do is just add that color because obviously the exposure adjustment layer has made it all murky and horrible. So I'm just going to add this back in. I'm actually going to squish the brush down. What we'll do is we'll add that there, and bring it down and down to super bright in the middle. Blending mode, linear dodge add. So we've kind of got a little bit of a glow there. I could even add a really small one. trying to squish that down as much as we can there we go we add one of those <laughs> those really cool little lights and of course he's coming through the cave we need a light source so let's select a solid color and I'm going to sample this sort of yellowy yellowy um, white color this is really cool you'll like this so um, white, let's hide that on the mask. Switch to a soft feathered brush. And for opacity, be, 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 we'll go for five. Make this bigger and I'm just gonna start clicking. Just clicking a bunch of times just to build that up. So we can see the light coming through the cave. It's kind of shining through the cracks in his arm where they're kind of lifted up as well. And doing that kind of makes it look like the light is hitting him. You could add highlights if you really wanted to as well. I've just realized he's kind of floating off the floor. So there, um, a shadow as well. There's probably better ways to do this, but I'm just gonna do it very lazy and flip him upside down and just stretch him over here like this. This is like a super lazy way of doing it. But it's one that works sometimes. <laughs> and we'll need him to be really thin and really tall as well. We wanna try and line the feet up as best we can. I could probably puppet warp the feet if I need feet if I needed more precision. Oops. Let's remove those little bits there. Yeah, I could play around with this forever. And we'll go and move this under the snail. Set the blending mode to multiply. And again, just have it blend over the rocks just a tiny bit. There we go, not too much. And I need it to blur gradually. I think I mentioned this technique yesterday actually. So if you uh, want to know how to gradually blend a shadow as it moves, you will like this trick. Put a pin in the starting point here. We'll crank up the blur. And we need to rotate this to match the angle. So. This solid line is the starting point of the shadow. Everything here is gonna be nice and crisp. This dashed line back here is gonna be the blur, the maximum blur. So everything between these two lines will graduate from zero pixels to 95 pixels blur. Floyda says, great tips and tricks here. I know, yeah, this is this is actually gold. The stuff, This stuff here is absolute gold. This, this is the most useful part of the stream now. So uh, <laughs> we're actually gonna learn something. Um, so you can see this is how you can gradually blur a shadow out. So something like this. 
gradually blurs as it moves into the distance. Where's that snail gone? Yeah, I might have to move the shadow above and then just mask out around the uh, the headphone thing. Okay. So there we go. That's not too bad on the shadow. Probably a little bit much on the blend. It's showing a little bit too much of the ground coming through. So I'm going to just keep that really slight. Um, now this part of the shadow is way too hard. So what I will do is I will just go and add a bit of Gaussian blur. Really slight, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. This will add 0.3 at this end, so it softens it. It will add 0.3 at this end, but that won't make any difference because this is already super blurred anyway. And as one little kind of piece of icing on the cake, you could even, if you're feeling brave, just get a soft feather brush and go boosh like that. Or do it even more subtle. So that part of the shadow becomes just a little bit more pronounced. And I've done that really quickly, actually. That's a bit that's a bit rubbish. But um, what I would do as well is uh, you could use Liquify or you could use the Smudge tool. And where you've got these, these ridges in the rocks, nice low percentage, just shift it slightly. Because the shadow wouldn't be perfectly flat over that rocky surface. It would have these little kind of kinks that would match the contours of the rocks. And that's not too bad, actually. You see what I'm doing here? There we go. Something like that. And it just kind of helps to... I mean, that's not too bad as a quick shadow. That could be a heck of a lot worse. And with the astronaut, actually, I'm just going to add one more exposure adjustment layer. Make it super, super dark, blackity black, and then just yeah, brush that back in there. There we go, the part of him that is a lot darker. Yeah, cool, amazing. And you could grade the shadow as well. I'm getting really kind of obsessed with this shadow. Um, where did I put the shadow layer? There we go. What we could do is we could add a curves adjustment layer just to this layer. We could switch to the red channel. And what we can do is, that's not really doing anything. That's probably because I've got a blend on it. If it's not doing something, it's because there's something else conflicting with it. it might be the blending mode. Let's see if I can... Oh, okay, it's not affecting that layer for some reason. Not sure why. I think I might have put an effect or something on it. But what I was going to do, it, it's not working right now for some reason, um, is... Oh, actually, if I merge that into a smart object, will it work then? Let's try it. Huh, uh, for some reason it doesn't want to work. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, we'll do it without that. That's fine. So what I was going to try and show you was that you could warm the shadow up. 
so you can actually introduce a bit more warmth into the shadow because the image in the cave is very like reddish so I was going to try and mask that to the shadow and then just make it a little bit do you see what I mean make it a little bit redder and then that's quite strong so drop the opacity down down and just introduce a little bit of readiness from that shadow which is the the background rock underneath and of course the light as well right oh this is uh this is a long one today Whew. hopefully this bit's uh, especially helpful <laughs> Sorry if I'm a bit less chatty now. I'm actually, when I do this sort of stuff, I concentrate quite a lot. How about organizing a generative fill contest involving the audience, maybe based on a predetermined topic? That is a great idea. Yeah, that would be really cool. I think we'd have to have, to have a way of, like, being, for me, being able to verify it was done with generative fill. So I don't know if people kind of screen record or show their process or something like that. But yeah, that'd be really cool. Tilt shifting the shadow is a really good idea. Yes, very, very useful. You truly are the Bob Ross of digital manipulation, man. That's very kind of you, thank you. I just need the curly hair now. <laughs> okay, uh, right. Let's just finish up the headphones. I've lost all my layers now. Where's Which one's which? Um, that satellite dish. no idea what what layer the headphones are oh no of course i put them in their own i smart object smart objected them okay so i'll have to do these manually by hand then so i'm going to darken down the headphones hide that this is so much easier with a graphics tablet if you're serious about doing this kind of digital art just honestly honestly guys get a graphics tablet <laughs> it's a heck of a lot easier so I'm just going to brush these in here super quick and leave a nice little highlight along the top. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm actually just going to use the highlight from the original image. So there we go. They've got these kind of light blue bits. Darken everything else. There we go. That's the like really sort of quick and dirty retouch. That's the easy way to do it. Um, and then you can you could go in and add like a, a an exposure adjustment layer to brighten it as well if you wanted. And then just kind of go along that uh, that little rim bit there and just add like a punch of color like that. Here we go. You could do more, to be fair. Uh, and then it's just a satellite dish. Satellite dish, right? Oh wow! I'm going to try and do this quick, but this would be a this would be a a bit more involved. This one because you've obviously got the contours of the dish shape. So how would I do this? Let's make the darkest part first. Because it's white and it's very light, we don't need to add a highlights one. So let's make it darker first, and then what would we have? We have a highlight. We would have one here, but not on the inside, only around the rim. We'd have a highlight here as well, coming from this right-hand side. We'd have one from the left. <laughs> so we'd have the rim. We'll do that one first. Normally, I would have my rim light and my kind of any light spilling over on separate layers, but I'm going to do this quickly. So, you got there a little rim light, little rim light. And I should really just, oh, this is going to be a pain. I should really go and add one down here like this. Oh, I did that quite, quite quickly, actually. Huh. That worked quite well, rotating the canvas. A little rim light there. Uh, where else would you get one? You probably get a few more, but I'll leave it at... Um, maybe you get one around here. Oops. 
something like that. oh that's, <laughs> that's a bit of a wonky rim light let's let's try that again I mean with a tablet this is so much easier to get straight so there we go we'd have some rim lights and then what I would do duplicate the same again give it a fresh layer and then we'll do any light spilling over so it's usually soft brush bring the opacity down and uh, this would kind of really be just doubling up Okay, there we go. I'm just going to do it on the same layer. Do this really, really slowly. A bit over here. And it's tricky. You've got to try and match. Think about which parts of the the dome not the dome, um, the sort of dish shape would be lighter than the rest. So if you've got any 3D experience, it's definitely going to help you here. And I could make this darker. So I could exagger exaggerate this even more if I wanted to. Make it something like that. And then, of course, I've got to adjust that black point in the same way I did with the snails. Just bring it up a bit. Yeah, so you can see it does look quite a lot different. That would probably take a lot more work, actually. I think to get that looking... To get that looking better, it would take... Um, quite a lot more work. I definitely need to add... Like an even darker area. For some parts. But yeah, I could play around with that all day. We haven't even got to balancing colors yet. That's just all exposure. And that's that's done pretty quickly as well. So we could play around with color balance and we could just very easily, let's just throw that on there. There we go. Yeah, that dish, that dish isn't great. That would need a lot more work to do that really well. Um, but yeah color balance and then what I'm going to do is select and copy everything convert this to a smart object and go to camera raw filter this is a secret source when it comes to adding the finishing touches and that's just kind of adding a bit of clarity and texture and you could actually D, yeah, so dehaze here. I can kind of use this to exaggerate that kind of light bloom coming in. And I mean, yeah, there's all sorts we could do. Most of all of that was just about exposure balancing in terms of color and lighting. I didn't even adjust the, the uh, exposure of the cave, actually. So if I go to, where's the cave? Yeah, I didn't even darken that. Very quickly, I could just easily darken the cave and make it more dramatic. And uh, yeah, the headphones look good. Oh yeah, that dish looks rubbish. The di the di this is the thing with retouching. Just don't don't rush your retouching. Honestly. Um, it makes such a massive, massive difference rushing this part. And I, I've made this mistake before. I, I still make it if I get a bit carried away with something. I rush this part, then uh, yeah, it, it does have a tendency to look a bit rubbish. 
Yeah, so let's get rid of it. We'll get rid of the dish for now. Just so I can at least finish the stream with something that I'm semi happy with. And um, boom, there we go. And I could do all sorts more with that. But that's that's not bad for what, how long did we spend on that? Probably nearly an hour or something. And we generated all of that from scratch. And yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a million things I could spend hours doing this and maybe I will spend some more time on it, but that's not bad. That's just amazing. <laughs> that, that, was, <laughs> that was amazing. That was good fun. But um, a slightly more practical use, um, you know. Oh, yeah. Wow. That didn't turn out too bad. When I do this photo manipulation stuff, like like I know you, you might watch Benny and Phase Runner and these guys doing it, and they're just masters of it. They'll do it so fast. Whereas um, I think I, I like to take a lot longer and I think I think they're honestly a lot better than me at it. So I can get some really good results that I'm happy with with photo manipulation, but it just takes me a lot longer to get there, um, especially when it comes to like lighting and shadows. Whereas those guys, they're like they're super talented, and uh, but it's it's difficult because I always like I'm looking at people's work who are like at the top of their game, and I'm like I want to make work as good as that. And I can I can get closer. I can definitely get closer, but it just takes me like three times as long. So if I were doing something like this for real, yeah, I would take this as a starting point and go, okay, cool. The concept has legs. Now I need to hunker down for three, four, five hours and just refine this. Um, yeah, which is why I don't really do kind of many tutorials and streams on it because um, it just it takes a while. But yeah, if you like more streams on this sort of stuff, um, because these streams are good because they're long format, we do them and take, you know, we spend an hour, two hours, three hours doing them, then it kind of maybe lends itself a bit better to this kind of stuff. Oh, right. That is two and a half hours. I am exhausted. Welcome back, Semma. I was solving questions by the hour for the exam. It's better to send your break time watching. Oh, it's very kind of you. <laughs> yeah, watch it from the beginning. Thank you, Sad. I appreciate that. Whew, right, I'm exhausted. I'm going to go and get some fresh air now. And um, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. And uh, yeah, I've had a ton of fun doing this. And uh, yeah, we did get to something semi-serious in the end. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. Right. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, and uh, yes, I will see you next week for design review.